It's a little tight. Oh, hey, shiny crafty people, Tim Totten here, and welcome back to the channel. Um, today, we're gonna do something super fun um, and actually really helpful. You see, a friend of mine came over to my house and she was wearing this interesting shirt. It was a shirt that looked kind of like this and it had a zipper on it that can open and has this interesting access. And she was wearing this because she does, um, she has lived, as she says, five years past her expiration date, and she is still going through chemotherapy treatment for cancer. And so doing that, she needs to have easy access to her port. And that zippered shirt gives her easy access to her port, but it's not something readily available. But you and I can make them for people in our community or people in our families who are dealing with cancer. And we can do that so that they are more comfortable having uh, either chemotherapy treatment or having blood drawn rather than having to put on an ugly hospital gown. They can still wear their own clothes. So I want to show you how to do that. But you know what? And first, come this way. I want to show you, tell you why I'm wearing this crown and this sash. You see, in Eustace, where I'm from, we have a big celebration that's been going on since 1902. You see, our city was barely not even 20 years old yet. And so many Northerners would come to Florida during the winter and stay at our local Oklahoma Hotel. And the, uh, the proprietor and the other residents wanted to make people feel more comfortable coming to the hotel and missing out on the celebrations they would normally have up north. And one of those in February was George Washington's birthday. So in 1902, they held the very first George Washington's birthday celebration in Eustis, Florida. And it has just continued, even though the the Oklahoma Hotel burned down in 1922 and the city's demographics changed, we continued to hold this event. And for the last 121 years, we've held the George Washington's birthday celebration. Now, in more recent times, it has been modernized to be called George Fest, but it really still is a celebration of our first president. And one of the things they started during the times in the 20th century when our area was a huge citrus area, in fact, citrus really drove the local economy, they had a big gala ball as part of the George Washington's birthday celebration called the Orange Ball. People dressed in their finest clothes and everyone who was anyone in the area came to that event and they would honor at that event a king and queen from the community. And so what they've been using it for the last, I don't know, 20 so years that I've been coming to the area and living here now is it's been used as sort of a lifetime achievement award, which is kind of funny because you might be thinking, Tim, as of the time you're recording this, you're only 47. And what have you achieved everything? Well, for a couple of years, I was nominated and I really pushed and asked people not, please do not vote for me for Orange King because I thought it really was kind of inappropriate for me to have be voted on a Lifetime Achievement Award when I hadn't accomplished as much as I wanted to. And yet, this year, the timing just seemed right. An event I put on called the Amazing Race for Charity is entering its ninth year. We put on our sixth TEDx conference. I have now five businesses in the area and employ you know, almost two dozen people in various capacities. And I think, you know, maybe it's appropriate. It doesn't feel so weird to wear this crown. But since we are going to be now making something and showing you, I think I'll take the crown off and get right back to design, showing you how to do the port shirt that I already talked about. All right, let's take this off and get down to sewing. So there aren't a lot of materials required for this. You need some kind of t-shirt uh, and you need a something to mark with. You need a zipper. I'm using a nine inch zipper, although we won't use the entire thing. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of fusible interfacing. I cut a piece one inch by nine inches so I could be able to do that. And of course you'll then need a t-shirt. Now I picked one from a project we built a couple of years ago, like in 2017, we built this enormous 80 foot long wall that had the question, before I die, I want to. And people used chalk on this uh, chalkboard to write the answer. And we had over 400 spots that people could fill in. And every day it would fill up with all these amazing answers from people in our community. And although this may seem somewhat morbid because it has the word die in it, it really, this is about life. And people all constantly, whenever I wear one of these shirts, people ask me all the time, what do you want to do before you die? They ask me and then I say to them, well, what do you want to do? Mine is to go to Japan and see some really amazing stuff, including the Imperial Hotel designed by my favorite architect, Frank Lloyd Wright. But for other people, it may mean uh, something else. And so we ask people, a lot of people want to go to Italy for some reason. You'll see all the different people in the back that were sponsors uh, when we did it. And we ran it for six full months in our town. But what I'm going to do is turn this particular shirt inside out. It's important to know where your person that you're making this for has a port. I will tell you that most of the ones I've seen, the port is on the person's uh, right uh, chest area. So I am going to make this to where it goes on the right. Now remember, this is a shirt. Now this may, this is the right, but of course this when turned inside out would be the left. So we're in fact 
going to put it over here on the left, which will become the right when it's the right side out. Does that make any sense? And also we would want to ask the person you're making it for if they have a port in a specific area. Some people have ports further down maybe. Mostly it's here. So we're going to angle our, use our fusible interfacing and place it in that particular area. So that'll go there. I'm going to iron that on and I go right up to the edge because we're going to make it to where it opens completely here. And I'm not going to worry about whether it messes with any words on the front, although it, it should be pretty close to not doing that. It's up to you whether you care about whether it might mess with the words on the front. But I'm going to go ahead and iron that on and then come back here and show you how we mark it out. Now you'll want to follow the instructions for your particular fusible interfacing. Mine has a shiny side and a non-shiny side. So obviously the shiny side goes down. I'm following the instructions there. And I'm going all the way to the edge of the shirt here up at the collar. And I'm just gonna come in and give this a good hold down on it for a number of seconds just to set it to start. But then I will come back and really put the heat on it. And just follow the instructions you have on yours. It might say steam or no steam. This one doesn't seem to care. I've used this a lot for um, t-shirt quilts and other things. So I like this on jersey fabric. You know, t-shirt is a jersey fabric. And this is also really to keep the fabric from stretching. That's a big problem in what we're gonna do. We don't want the fabric to stretch. Now you might wanna make sure you use a, a somewhat soft uh, interfacing because this will be against a person's body and you wanna make sure it looks okay. It's not gonna hurt anybody's. Uh, chest or anything, especially if they're dealing with um, chemotherapy and um, needing to access this, you know, and wear this shirt a lot, you want it to not scratch them and hurt them. So now we're going to do is come in and put the markings on here. And remember, we're marking this to go um, for a zipper. Now, I don't want to run the zipper the entire way. Like, I don't think I need a full, when I open up this nine inch zipper, we're gonna see how much of the zipper there really is. I only wanna cut one end if I have to cut anything, and that would be this end down at the bottom. So I'm gonna look and see how far it would go. And I kinda like the idea that it's, that we're gonna take off that metal piece. You know, the zipper has a metal closure, but that actually could really um, bother someone's skin if it was touching them. So we're going to eventually put the zipper on in this way. And I'm going to literally take these flanges of the zipper and sort of, um, they're going to fold back under. So in fact, actually, I might even want to take off the top where those metal pieces are on the zipper too, and then be able to just fold the fabric. So I'll see how long this is. And I'll say, I'm going to come up about, I'm going to measure right down the middle. This is one inches. This is a one inch piece. So I'm going to go a half inch, a line right down the half inch, all the way down. And then I'm going to come up another half an inch to make the mark where it crosses over. And I will just draw lines to connect the edges because I'm going to cut those two. In fact, let me just see how that would work. I don't think I, I think I want to actually... I'm gonna forget that this part is on the bottom here and go up a full inch. Put a mark there, draw a line across, and then do that. And if I wanted, I could come in and sort of peel this off and cut it off. And you'll get better if you do several of these. I suggest making a couple for whoever friend you're gonna do this for, and that would make their life a lot easier. So I'm gonna come back in now that this is ironed down really well. Might even give it a little bit extra of a push and make sure it's really ironed down well. I'm gonna come back now that it's stabilized and cut that out. And cut into that point. So I'm gonna come back here and cut down to that point. And then what I should have pointed is we're gonna fold these back in half right along themselves. So I don't actually need to cut all the way over. I only need to cut about halfway down that line. I'm gonna give you a closer look at that so you can see what I mean. So I'm in fact only gonna cut those to that little bit of a line right there, to that halfway point, the half inch point. 
because when I fold all this over, I'm only, only going to fold a half an inch down. And these, each of these over. So now that I have this set where I want, and I've cut just to these points here, I'm going to come back with my iron and fold this in half. And I'm just folding it to itself. If you want and you have any glue, you can come in and actually glue that down. It would make it so much easier to do if you wanted to glue it down. I'm going to put some stitching into it, so I'm not at all worried. It's not going to hurt anything. And I am now... There's so much steam, which I need to turn off. It is um, burning my fingers far ahead. So that's now really done. And then I flip that bottom edge down. All right, so now that's properly folded back on either side. And you can start to see the words coming in. In fact, to let you see what this looks like better, I'll put this. Now you can see what we've done is sort of folded these out of the way so that when we put our when we put our zipper on, it'll then close those back up. All right, let's go to our sewing machine and I'll show you what to do next. All right, so I'm actually gonna do something a little unorthodox for me, which is I'm gonna do some stitching in advance just to get everything lined up. And I'm gonna use my quarter inch seam allowance to do that. I'm just gonna do a little top stitching and when I put the zipper on, I'm gonna really try to follow that really well uh, when I go, come in and put the zipper in. So that I don't have too many lines of stitching. And what this has done is created a half an inch uh, line in here, a half an inch space for the zipper to go into. Now the benefit is I'm using black thread on the black uh, t-shirt and so you really don't see the stitching at all it's really hard to see that stitching but what I've done is I've gone in here and really stitched in that piece it's hard to see with the the neck in the way but I've stitched in that so that now I can come back in and lay my zipper underneath it so let's go to the table and really lay in the zipper in a way that makes the most sense so we can trim it and cut it Actually, before we do that, what I wanna do is I wanna come in and put a stitch line into the zipper down here where I know I'm going to cut. I've done that so I can come back and cut off this metal piece. I really don't want that in there under someone's, you know, under someone's neck. And then if I measure how far up it needs to come after I put that underneath it, I'll put it underneath here to measure how far up I need to come. I can then also mark the top and in fact what I'll do with that is I'll just pry off these pieces uh, actually I won't I'll, I'll, I'll stitch them across but just chop those off at the top and stitch them too so you'll see that when I get to that point so I'm going to turn this inside out so that we can see where the, the zipper is going to go And I'll, I want you to notice that I actually did this one wrong. I told you I was going to go one side and I didn't properly do it. This is actually not a person's right side. It's their left side. So when you do yours, make sure you do it on the proper side. We're going to put the zipper in here underneath. And I'm using that line that I put there and going just below it. And then I can run this up either side. Now, I picked a white zipper because I liked how it sort of matched the lettering and that would look kind of cool and one of the nice parts about doing this this way is I can pull the zipper all the way up and further up and then I'll stitch down each side and then I can open the zipper and open it up and stitch it the other way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew down the left side first so I'll go in and pin that in place and remember we've got a little bit like I look down here and see how much width we've got 
in between, we're going to give it a little space. So we're not going to go right up next to the zipper when we pin it on. We're going to give about an eighth of an inch between the teeth and the fabric that we stitch on. Now that's important to notice because we want it to be even all the way down. Or at least I do. You, you can make it as uneven as you want. But if you like it to be careful and, and look good, you know, take as much time as you need to in this. If it's utilitarian for you, then that's fine too. But I think I take a little bit of time. So I'll pin all that down. I'm going to stitch down there, turn the edge, and come up the other side. So instead of pinning it for me, you can pin all that. I'm going to go to the machine because I feel more comfortable sort of pushing it through the machine uh, this way. And to get started, I'll leave this flap open so I can stitch the other edge and have plenty of material space. Let's go over there. All right, so I'm going to stitch next to the zipper this way. I know that's going to seem a little weird because I have so much material over here, but I think it works the best to really make sure I'm getting a good I'm getting it done properly. And I'm going to give it a little bit of love there. Make sure I really backstitch. This is gonna get used a lot. You gotta remember, someone's gonna to have to, every time they wear this shirt, for any kind of testing or chemotherapy, getting blood drawn, they're gonna to have to up unzip this. So you wanna make sure it looks, that it's very secure. That's just why I backstitched it very closely at the top. And even though I have um, interfacing in there, um, stabilizing this shirt. I'm just being real careful that I don't try to stretch it too, too far. And it'd be a good idea to make sure that your stitching actually went through the zipper as well in the back. So I'm getting to this point at the bottom. I'm very happy with how that worked. I'm gonna put it in place so I can turn the corner at the bottom. And I'm just taking my time stitching this down, trying to follow the previous stitching so that I'm not overdoing how much uh, double stitching I'm going to have. And then, of course, you're going to stitch over top of polyester um, teeth on the zipper. So just be careful as you do that. Now, when I bring it back down this way, remember, this is going to get a little bit more difficult because you're bringing all this fabric around. So I'm just going to take it slow and I can make sure that my spacing is still accurate. And in fact, it's sort of the nice thing is, is that this foot is walking itself next to the teeth and keeping me an accurate distance, which I really like. So I'm just making my efforts. Let me give you a different angle of this. You might shake a little bit when this machine goes through, but I'm just, I'm, I'm letting the teeth ride, ride next to the, um, the presser foot as I go down. You see it sort of walking it right next to it. Very helpful, actually. Now, I'm not going to go all the way to the end on this side. I probably should have on the other side. Because I, what I want to be able to do is fold this fabric back once I make a cut to it. So I'm going to just take out some threads here so I can do that and stitch the other. So um, let, me get my, let me get one of the seam rippers here and pull out some of all of that thread that got bunched up in there. You can see how much that was. So a, a good, a, several friends of mine have dealt with cancer um, in their lifetime. In fact, um, we do know that just about half of, half of the people on the earth will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime. At least half of all Americans, but it's expected that that's half of the people on the earth too. The numbers nationally and international. And so imagine that means I know a lot of people who've dealt with cancer, and I bet you have too. Maybe you've dealt with it yourself. Fifty percent is a huge is a huge number. And uh, and so a, a good friend of mine was over at my house working on a project with me, and she was wearing one of these shirts. And I said, what kind of shirt is that? And she goes, oh, this is my port shirt. And then she went to show me what she, why she wears it. And um, I was so happy that, that she was willing to share that with me, you know, because it's a very personal journey going through cancer. But also, um, it made so much sense. Why would you want to have to wear a, a gown in a cold place? I mean, you can't wear a shirt that you like. So it was great. Somebody had taken some of her shirts, and I said, wow, I want to do a project like that. 
Okay, I'm gonna finish this and I'll show you in a minute. All right, I'm back. So what I've done is I've opened those up. I'm going to take these and fold them back here along the edge, just like this. And then I will top stitch this open, just like this. And in fact, what the value of this is, this will let us keep that edge nice and finished. And we'll of course have to trim some threads because that will look bad. And it's a lot easier way to finish this at the top and not look so weird. But it also gives you a nice easy V shape to go into when someone's pulling it shut. And that's the finished top edge where they would pull their shirt closed. All right, let's see what this looks like open. So here's the finished shirt. Ooh, I get it. It's kind of cool, actually, the way it looks like that. And there's the neck portion, of course. And then it unzips so someone can get access to their port really easily. You saw how well it finished on the inside. And you could, of course, do other things to close this if you wanted to. I think it looks fine that way because I don't think it's going to bother somebody. But uh, we'll see when I give this to my friend. Um, I'll find somebody who's got a port on the left side. In fact, I'm going to make her a different one in a minute and take that to her as well because I know she likes color red. All right, so that is the port shirt that I created, designed, and, well, I mean, it, it's actually been inspired by a couple of the people. So I'm going to link in the description below a couple of videos that I watched to give me an idea how to do this. Now, I didn't copy uh, all of them. I had some different ideas of how I would do it, but they're still really good. One of them has just a section that opens, and that was a really attractive way that she did that. So you should check those out. I'll link them in the description below. Um, and until next time, I hope you can take this to your community, help some people, maybe some people that you love and care for, or maybe just donate them to a local uh, children's hospital or elsewhere, some way to really help people who are dealing with a, um, a difficult treatment and make them feel uh, a little more comfortable. Until next time, stay crafty. Bye for now.